going on, everybody? Welcome to. As you see, I got the title on my shoulder. Eventually, I'm gonna have two titles on my shoulder, and back banner means is a Monday Night Raw review. Um, I, I when I say two titles, I'll the, the title that'll be on my other shoulder will be the World Heavyweight Championship, but it won't be the new one. It'll be the uh, the one back from you know the ruthless aggression slash attitude era. Cause I always wanted that, so that's like a childhood uh, thing. I, when it comes to buying belts, like I could, you know, me, I'm all about completing things I couldn't do as a kid. One of the things was getting a belt. I got one. I completed that. But this is, this was actually the second belt I wanted. The original belt I wanted was the World Heritage Championship. So I will be getting that so before I go to SummerSlam. But we're not here to talk about my championship glories. We're here to talk about this Monday Night Raw. So. Um, I did. They did do a repack of what happened um, in on um, last week uh, Monday Night Raw, and they talked about the uh, matches that took place in at the households on Saturday and Sunday. Um, um, I can't remember uh, who, what took place on where. Which one did I talk about on SmackDown? Okay, I told you Santos. And LA, you know, okay, I told you about the Santos, LA, Tiffany. Uh, I think, right, yeah, uh, Kofi beat Ray and Shayna beat uh, Maxine Dupree. So, uh, that was that. Uh, so, with that being said, they started off the show with Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre would come out and basically cut a promo talking about CM Punk, but. He didn't waste time. He said he, he said he didn't want to waste time on Sam Punk, who was a coward and somebody that he, he that probably won't be medically clear to compete uh, in the next twenty years. He also made like a job about how um, Sam Punk um, that he said the great. He said he said something about the greatest. God did. He says he will mark it how Seal Punk would say something about the devil uh, greatest lie was make you believe he doesn't exist. And he said Seal Punk's greatest lie, uh, greatest, uh, you know, lie was that he he somehow looked look like a, a junkie going to rehab without actually taking drugs. But then he said, he, then he said uh, the real thing he did was convince everybody to be on his side and to like him or whatnot. Um, but that's when he said said he wasn't gonna talk about CM Punk. Uh, I mean, instead he turned his attention to Drew McIntyre. I mean, Drew McIntyre to uh, Damian Priest uh, and Jay Uso, saying that he's gonna deal with Jay Uso later. Uh, later, but that uh, you know that Jay Uso is basically in his spot winning, and that he's gonna. Uh, but he wanted to deal with Drew McIntyre. I keep saying Drew McIntyre, Damian Priest. Because Damian Priest got the uh, War Heavyweight Championship, and he called Damian Priest a paper champion. But this would bring out Damian Priest, who would come out and basically tell him to shut his mouth. But since he knows he's not going to, he said, "Let's try something different. How about you run your mouth to the person that you're going to talk about and to the person's face?" And they basically ran down. He ran down how Damian Priest was basically not worthy of being champion. That he had a good story and a, you know a good you know hero story coming through the WWE, but that doesn't mean you deserve to be world heavyweight champion. He said his uh he said his neighbor had is a had a good uh good hero like story, but that doesn't mean he deserved to be champion. But Damian Priest reminded uh, Drew McIntyre that it was it was his fault that he needed to go look at stuff in America. He's the he's blaming everybody for his mistakes, but he needs to blame himself. And it's that that it was his fault that he's not standing here right now as world heavyweight champion. Because he said he could have been had casted in. He said he wanted to cash in on Seth Rollins, but Seth Rollins, but the, uh, Drew kept interfering and stopping him. And then he said, on top of that, um, he said, you was the one who told me that if I was smart, you would cash it in on me. And that's what I did at WrestleMania. He said, but at WrestleMania, you could have, he said, I couldn't even cash it in on you if you would have just won, as you did, won the title and just walked away with your. And, with your wife's hand instead you had to go there and taunt CM Punk and get your uh butt kicked by one-armed man um 
but after all that he said that if you won a championship match you got it i know you're gonna be medically clear soon but that i'm gonna make you eat those words of thinking that i'm a paper champion when i beat you he said everybody can all rise to that um then we will go into the first match of the night i know that was a long segment uh, but we'll go to the first match of the night and that wasn't even everything they talked about for real for real if you think about it that could have went longer um but i keep saying it here goes the, the first match of the night which is uh the cream of the ring round two uh match which is Santa blazer versus eo sky and this one i think they even saw like a backstage thing where they got the uh, what eo and zoe was coming into the building they were getting into it with damage control um just carried over into the match i think eo yeah eo was the only one who had an interest and she made her interest then she would get attacked by uh uh, Shane and Blazer, who basically would beat her up a lot before the match started. Then they finally have a they would finally have a match, which was pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, solid opening. This was worthy of an opening, of an opening match. This was this was not the worst. I want to say this is like a bad match, so it could have been better. This was a a good way to start off. So we, we're still keeping within the theme. This is all about the next pay per view, which is King and Queen in the Ring. So that's what we got and. After, even though Sano was game and looked like at times she was going to win, we got EO Sky picking up the victory. Um, then we get a Judgment Day promo backstage where they talking amongst themselves and Carlito's there. And he's basically telling him that um, that he's going to make him change his mind and, uh, and hopefully one day they can all be amigos. Um then we get a couple of backstage promos one from chad gable yelling at uh at people this is this is out of order uh because i can't remember in what order did these went in because these all happened before the second match but yeah chad gable yelling at uh alpha county and informing them a former oldest and tozawa that they had matches tonight oldest versus sammy tozawa versus bronson reed um what else did we get? Uh, we get the Miz, the Miz and them finding out that they're going to have uh, that the Miz thinking that our truth uh, put him in another uh, another title match, but instead they were just talking about having new number one contenders, which was going to be made later on the night in the Federal Four Way. Um, and then we got an appearance by Kitana, uh, K- uh, K- Kiana James. I don't want to say Kitana, but Kiana James. Um, who was the, I wrote it down? Is that New Cash Republic? I don't know. It was another. Uh, it was a, I can't remember who that was. It was so many people, but uh, it was another. It was another backstage promo. I can't remember who that was. I'm trying so hard. Oh, New Day. New Day had a promo talking about um. Uh, about uh, Kofi going out there and beating uh, Gunther. And then we'll get to the second match, which is the King of the Ring round two uh, match. This match will actually feature Lady in Garcia. She is, uh, she has came back. Uh, Shane, that be doing the Wrestling Pit Podcast with me, subscribe if you haven't to that channel, Wrestling Pit Podcast. Um, Wrestling Pit Podcast. Subscribe. <laughs> now that I said it three times, um, no, yeah, uh, Lenny Garcia was back, and Shane informed me he was like, "Is if he said like if you think about it in this way, it was kind of like a petty thing, not bit a petty, and it was in a way how all these backlash about people talking about Samantha Urban, so that he's trying to be like a kind of petty and bring in Lenny Garcia to pass like the kind of pass the torch." And she helped uh, Samantha introduce the next match, which is uh, Kofi Keister versus Gunther. She uh, not, I think she did Gunther. No, she did Kofi Keister because Kofi Keister came out first, and then Samantha would do Gunther. Uh, uh, this was a good match. Kofi Keister actually took it to Gunther, injuring him before the bell gave a ring, and then they had a good lengthy match, which I like because the one thing I will say. I didn't say this before, 
and I should have said it, but the things I like about that, the reason why I like what Triple H is doing with this king and queen on the ring, he's taking it seriously. All these matches are not quick matches. Every even with the first round and this and this, even with last week and this week, nothing was quick. It was all good, maybe 15 plus minute matches. And they good. They got time to cook, make you and make you get invested into these people, win or lose. And win or lose, Shayna Blazer and EO looked good. And the same thing here, Gunther always looking good. But Kofi, I like that he actually let Kofi cook and actually show why he's a former world champion. But we all knew Gunther was going to win. It was no surprise there. But Gunther got the victory over a game, Kofi Kingston. Um, we got a, a backstage promo with Lyra Valkyria. Uh, uh, I can never say her last name. Lyra Valkyria being interviewed by her upcoming match and how she feel being on Monday Night Raw. But she would get interrupted by uh, Liv Morgan. No, Becky Lynch first. Yeah, she would get interrupted by Becky Lynch. I think they were talking about Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch would say something and then walk away. And then she would get interrupted by Liv Morgan who... Uh, who you know congratulated her welcome her to money that wall but then turn heel and what has uh Liv Morgan always been a b word and uh she said she just laughed and said well why don't you ask her yourself and while she's you know saying this to her you saw Becky's coat pop back up so you like oh crap she's behind her and then as per the norm she turned around oh there go Becky and Becky this was one of the worst punches to sales ever. The sale was good. The punch was bad. Because Becky, they, she just turned and looked at Becky, and Becky just said, as quiet as I just threw, as you can't see it because of the glitch, but I threw a punch, right? That's how quiet that punch was. It was no, no nothing. You just, she just threw a punch, and you heard no, like they couldn't even slap their own legs to make it seem like it was impactful. And Lil had to sell it like she, it was like that was the worst punch ever. It was so awkward and cringe. But uh, this wouldn't be Becky and Lil's only uh, time on the night. Uh, then we got a Karen Cross or weird Karen Cross promo where he had some words for Kofi Kingston, telling him it's not it's not too late to turn back the clock or something something like that. Uh, then we get the third match, which is Bronson Reed versus Akira Tozawa. Nothing much to say here. It was a quick squash match uh, with uh, Tozawa getting scolded by uh, Chad Gable. And then we get a Gunther promo talking about why he will be uh, Kofi Kingston and, and become king of the ring. Uh, yeah, I think th- this next one is Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce was interviewed by says about his big announcement, which was about the fatal four way for the uh to determine the number one contenders. And then he uh he would get interviewed on why he uh didn't uh, put Braun Breaker into it. But he you know, he simply explained that the reason why Braun Breaker didn't get put into the uh King of the Ring tournament was because uh there were other people who was more deserving of those spots and that he didn't want to throw Braun Breaker over to the deep end. Which Braun Breaker said that had he put him in the tournament, he said he would have swam with them and wa- and watched them drown or something like that. Um, let's see. Then we got the next uh, Queen in the Ring round two uh, match, which is Zoe Stars versus Lyra Vakira. And this was good. This was good. I enjoyed it. Um, it was a little slow at times. But for the most part, it was a good match between the two where Lyra Vakira getting the victory. Um, she would move on to did we oh, to face EO Sky. She would be facing EO Sky next week. Um, then we got a Jay Uso match or talking about why he's going to beat uh, uh, I- Ilya Dragunov. And then we'll get to the next match, which is Sami Zayn versus Otis. And this was, this was an okay match with the two. Uh, this was more about story than anything, but it still was an okay match, a decent match to watch. Um, yeah, none to none to explain here. Otis was told or that he didn't need he needed to be serious. Otis not the funny shaking doing the worm. Uh, uh, Otis, but we still end up getting that Otis anyway, which uh, 
ticked off Chad Gable. But in the end, oh, thanks to just some distractions from Chad Gable, being angry that Otis was still being the fun Otis, uh, Sammy were able to get the victory over uh, Otis. But then uh, as Otis was getting scolded in the ring and slapped in the back of the head, Sammy Zayn would come back and attack uh, Chad Gable and try to hit him with a Haluna kid, but he got re-rolled out the ring. Mad that this uh, and mad and blaming Otis for it, he smacks Otis. And my God, the crowd was behind Otis. They wanted him to turn and beat up Chad Gable so bad. I'm like, Triple H, you are a master for one, man. You, somehow you got the crowd on Otis' side. Um, uh, then we got uh, Bronson. Uh, I'm about to say Bronson. We got uh, Braun Strowman uh, backstage where he just uh, he's giving some words of encouragement to the Creed Brothers and uh, Ivy Niles. Uh, also, Ivy. Now, this was the second time we saw Ivy Niles tonight because when that back, it was a backstage promo with Chad, with that Chad Gable backstage promo from earlier. She, uh, Ivy Niles appeared there after she, he got done scolding Maxine Dupree. Um, but yeah, he, uh, Braun, uh, Braun Strowman was giving some words of encouragement to the Creed brothers, and then we get interrupted by uh, JD McDonough, who gave him a warning to not uh, get in the way or interfere with Judgment Day business and told him to consider yourself warned and he just said ooh y'all warned me and then went back to giving some more words of encouragement to the pre brothers and Ivy Niles. Then we get the sixth match of the night which is Dakota Kai versus Becky Lynch which was a good match. This was a good match. I enjoyed it but I wish it would have had a conclusive finish but it just had a DQ finish when it looked like Becky was going to win with a disarm her uh, only to get attacked by EO Sky and Kyrie Sane to cause the disqualification, which would bring out uh, uh, Lyra Vakir, who promised to have the, who earlier in the night promised to have Becky Lynch back. And they will fight off damage control only for Liv Morgan to come and grab uh, Becky and throw her into the turn. Turnbuckle and leave out the ring as Va- Lyra uh, was upset that she would do that. Um, then we got Ilya Dragunov promo talking about why he was going to be uh, Jay and how Jay is not ready for this type of dragon and that he beat Gunther. He's ready to face Gunther again, only for Gunther to show him and just smirk at him and walk away. Um, then we get the seventh match of the night, which is Judgment Day's fan battle and JD McDonough versus AOP versus the Creed Brothers versus New Catch Republic for the no one contendership to the world. Tag team championships, and this was a good, fun tag team match. Didn't go uh, too long as they had to get to the main event, but went long enough to make it still a good match. Which, with Judgment Day's uh, fan battle, JD Madonna getting a victory thanks to an uh, assist from Carlito. Uh, this will lead into a backstage promo where Judgment Day and them are celebrating with Carlito, and Damon Priest get his approval. And asked him that he can you know, he's not scared of Ray and he can handle his business with Ray. And he said, Yeah, he can. And he said, And Jay, uh, Damian Priest are forming good because Judgment Day don't roll with cowards. Uh, and then they, uh, but he, he did call him Amigo. Seems like he's warming up to Carlito. And uh, then we get the main event, which is Jay Uso versus Ilya Dragunov in the last of the round two for the least for Monday Night Raw of the king of the ring tournament and man jay is a star like he they got everybody doing bray wyatt's thing for you know with the lights and stuff the little fireflies now they fire flying for um for jay uso which people are speculating this might lead to a few with uh with which i call uncle holly he might not you know people are speculating even us over here at rest of the pit podcast <laughs> uh, or even speculated that this could lead to a, a you know, a feud with uh, Uncle Howdy potentially over, you know, use a Bray Wyatt thing. I think he even tweeted that he's the yeeter instead of eater, is yeeter of worlds. Uh, but yeah, this was a fun main event match between him and uh, Ilya Dragunov. And I was not expecting Jay. To, to be, you know, to be like, he has so much momentum. He got, he is so over. But the fact that he won and beat Ilya, I was for sure 
that they was going to have Ilya go over Jay to face um, Gunther. But no, they Jay beat Ilya in a game match. This match was good. It was worthy of the main event scene. They're really uh, elevating every day. I see how more and more of a star Jay Uso is coming, becoming. And yeah, he got the victory here over Ilya Dragon off to end the show. Oh, oh, well, not the end of the show. The show ended, I should say, after the words he had a stare down with Gunther, as it would be Gunther and Jay next week to determine who goes to Saudi and at the King of the Ring pay per view to face whoever wins for the SmackDown superstars. Uh, but this was a good show. I enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to give this show. I was initially going to give it a 7.5, but I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 because uh, I enjoyed it. It was good. I love the focus. I love the uh, the dedication to the King of the Ring, and the matches was okay. Uh, you know, besides for the little interference in here and there and the DQ fans, but other than that, the promos in the ring and ring work was good. But you let me know in the comments down below what you thought. If you enjoy my review of the uh, Monday Night Raw, you know what to do. You hit this button right there. Not the logo, but, you know, the little card that pops up for all my WWE reviews. And if you enjoy the video so much, more support the channel, you know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button because we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. And as always, hit on these videos for more of my magic content. Don't go anywhere because I got more. Peace, love, get some sleep, guys. Or have a good day if it's daytime, whenever you're watching it. Peace.